Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's tackle the adiabatic process, which is probably the most challenging of the four thermodynamic processes. What's unique about an adiabatic process is that it happens so quickly that there's no exchange of heat. So Q equals zero, which means if we take the first law of thermodynamics and replace Q by zero, we see that the work done is equal to the negative of the internal energy change. In other words, all of the energy that is used to do work came from the internal energy of the gas. Since delta U is equal to NC to V delta T, and the change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature, all we have to do is know the final and the initial temperature of a gas in order to calculate the delta U and therefore the work done by the gas. So we're going to utilize PV equals NRT. So when we set this equation up, we get that the temperature and of course at A is equal to the pressure at A times the volume at A divided by the number of moles times the gas constant. So when we take a look and see what's given, they give us the pressure at A and the volume at A. So in other words, we know the pressure at A, we know the volume at A, we know the number of moles, we know the gas constant, we can calculate the temperature at A without any problems. So what if we need a temperature at B? Because we need the temperature at both ends of the process. So that's equal to the pressure at B, the volume at B, divided by N times R. And again, we always check to see what we know and what we don't know. We know the pressure at B, that's given. We know the number of moles, we know R, but we do not know the volume at B. So we can't find the temperature at B. So to do that, we need to know we need to use one of these two equations that are peculiar for the adiabatic process. We have them on the list right here. P1 V1 to the gamma equals P2 V to the gamma, and T1 V1 to the gamma minus 1 equals T2 V to the gamma minus 1. We picked this one because we're trying to find V at B, and so essentially what this equation then becomes is it becomes P at A times V at A to the gamma equals P at B times V at B to the gamma. And we can solve that equation for V at B because we know the other three. We know the pressure at A. We know the volume at A. We know the pressure at B. We just don't know the volume at B. So once we use this equation to find the volume at B, we plug it in here to find the temperature at B. Now that we have two, both temperatures, we can solve for the change in internal energy and therefore the work. The one thing left is what is gamma? And so gamma, remember, is the ratio of C sub P over C sub V. And for a diatomic gas, which is what we have, C sub V is 5 over 2R, C sub P is 7 over 2R. So the ratio between those two, C sub P divided by C sub V is equal to 7 over 2R divided by 5 over 2R. So that's equal to 1.4. So now we have the gamma, and we should be able to solve for that. We do have to rearrange things a little bit for this equation. So we have V at B to the gamma equals V at A to the gamma. And that would be times pressure at A divided by pressure at B. And then if we take the gamma root of both sides, we get V at B is equal to V at A times PA over PB to the gamma root, which is raised to the 1 over gamma exponent. And so this equation allows us to find V sub B. We plug it in here, we find the temperature, then we have both temperatures, and we can then solve for delta U. And that's how you solve a adiabatic process. Now the rest is just algebra. We will throw in the numbers and we'll calculate the results. But essentially at this point, the physics problem is done. So quickly, let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. So for T sub A, that is equal to pressure at A, that's two times 101.325 times volume at A, which is 0 0.02, divided by 1 times 8.315. And so T at A is equal to, get a calculator, 101.325 times 2 times 0 0.02 divided by 8.315. That gives us 487.4 Kelvin. All right. Now we find volume at B. So this is equal to volume at A, which is uh, 0 0.02 cubic meters times the ratio pressure at A, which is, uh, which is 2. Oops. 
got that one wrong there, it says 2 divided by 1 half, 0 0.5, raised to the 1 over 1.4 power. And with a calculator. Times 0.2 equals, so that gives us 0 0.5384, that is V at B. And that then gets plugged in here, so now we have temperature at B is equal to pressure at B, which is 1 half times 101325 times volume at B, which is 0 0.5384 divided by number of moles times R. So times 0 0.5 times 101325 divided by 8.315 equals and oop, 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 we're missing a zero here. Ah, missing a zero. There we go. And so divide by 10, so we get 328 Kelvin. And then finally, we get our delta U, which is equal to 1 times 5 over 2 times R, which is 8.315. And T at B, which is 328, minus temperature at A, which is right here, 47.4. So delta U is equal to minus 487.4 times 8.315 times 2.5 equals and that would be minus 3,313 joules, and therefore work is equal to 3,313 joules. All right, so here we have the final results after we find the volume at B right here. So first of all, we calculated temperature at A. That was this. Then we use this equation to find the volume at B. Then we could plug that into this equation to find the temperature at B. And then finally, the change in U is simply equal to the change in the temperature times C sub V times the number of moles. And once we have that number, we just change the sign to get the work done. And that is how we deal with an adiabatic process.